Okay, I'm going to show you how to do an orthographic projection drawing on the first shape that you're asked to in the book. Now, an orthographic projection is a three-view drawing of an object. So if we have this object here, we need to understand which side is what view. And it never changes. According to your notes, this here is always going to be the front view. So that's this surface right here. Looking down is always going to be the top view. And looking here is always going to be the right side view. Now if you remember back to the notes, it said that the front view is always drawn first, the top view is always drawn second, and the right side view is always drawn last. So if we start with the front view, which is located in this bottom left corner, we always want to start with this corner right here, okay? Now I've given you this paper in the book because I want you to understand that this here is grid paper. Every square is equal to a quarter of an inch. This is an isometric grid. It's not exactly a quarter of an inch because each line is drawn back at an angle. But I do want you to understand that every square that you see here is still equal to a quarter of an inch. So what this means is we need to mark where we are here and I'd like you to just simply put a dot at an intersection on the front view here. I just placed a dot right there, okay? That's going to tell me where this point is. Now I'm simply going to count how many squares to the right I need to travel. One, two, three, four, five, six. If, if that's hard for you to remember or understand, you could actually write the numbers in the squares. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now six squares across would mean that it's an inch and a half because each square is a quarter of an inch. So four would be an inch and another two would be a half. So what I want to do is go back to that dot that I made here in the front view and I want to draw to the right with my ruler. One, two, three, four, five, six squares. I'm not using the ruler to measure right now. I'm simply using it as a straight edge because I've given you this grid here. Now let's go back to this corner I, I started at. Let's count how many squares it is tall. One, two, three, four, five. Five squares is equal to an inch and a quarter. Because four is one inch plus another quarter is an inch and a quarter. So let's go back to that starting point. This point here is still this point here. Now I'm going to go up in the upward direction. Five squares. One, two, three, four, five. Okay? So far I have two lines. This line here and this line here. If I look at where I ended up here at the top, that puts me right here on the shape. I want to draw the front view only right now. So now I need to count how many I travel to the right. One, two. It's two squares to the right. So I'm going to go two squares to the right. How many squares does it go down? Three squares. I'm going to go down. Guess how many? Three squares. I travel to the right. From here to here, four squares. So I'm going to travel to the right, four squares. One, two, three, four. It's a matter of counting the number of squares and knowing what direction to go in. Once I get to this point, I want to go down two squares. So I'm going to draw a line down two squares. Okay, this here 
is this here, this area right here, okay? That's the front view. That's what I'd see if I was a little person standing here watching that side of the shape. That's what I would see. The next thing we want to do is look at the top view, looking straight down as if we were a bird flying in the sky, okay? If I was a bird flying in the sky and I had this shape here in my hand and I just tipped it up to look at it, I would see this surface here and this surface here. So now I'm going to start by drawing my projection lines that we read in our notes. They show where an object starts, where it ends, and where there's any distinctive changes, like this corner right here. So I'm going to make a line, very light line, up into the top view square. I'm going to line my ruler up here and do the same thing. Okay, dark enough where I could see it, but not as dark as our object lines, okay? And here shows me where the object is going to end. So now by using these projection lines, I know where the object is going to start, where that step down is, and where it ends. So let's take a look at the picture here. If I'm going to start in this corner, I have to go over two squares and up four. So if I pick this corner here along this projection line to be right here, I need to go back four squares, okay, and over two. Complete that rectangle. Why? Because this rectangle that I just drew in the top view is this rectangle right here, two squares by four squares. Okay? Now, if I pick this up and looked at it, I'm going to see this surface next to this one. So I'm going to come over here, and that, that's going to be a rectangle that is in this shape. One, it's going to be four squares, which is one inch. Okay? And here, too. And then it closes itself off. And that's the front and top view. I'm also going to need projection lines to go from the front to the right side. So I'm going to take my ruler, line it up with the shape, and bring these projection lines over to the right side. This tells me how tall it is and where this step down is. Now if I look at the right side, what am I going to see? I'm going to see this surface here and this surface here. This surface one and this surface two. This is two squares tall and four wide. This is three squares tall and four wide. When I'm standing right here looking, it's going to look like this is right on top of this because I'm not going to see this surface. So let's do it. Let's go over here. This came over here. So I'm going to start by drawing this, this line right here. And I know by looking here that it's four wide. So I'm going to make this line four wide, complete that rectangle. So, so far I have this surface area right here. Now on top of that, the projection line tells me how tall it should be. So by using the projection lines, I can complete this without even having to count the number of squares. Students that forget to use projection lines make several mistakes. One of which means that the, the top view will not be lined up with the front view. It'll be shifted over. That is wrong. The right side view will be shifted up or down, which is wrong. Or the right side view will be wider or taller than it should be. And the same thing with the top view. Another common mistake is Students draw the front view correctly, and then when they get to the top view, they tend to rotate it around at 90 degrees. It's a trick of the eye, students. You need to understand that this is the front view. It's this wide, six squares. When you tip your head over to the top and look down, it's still going to be six squares wide. It does not rotate itself. That's why we use projection lines to show us that this is six squares wide from here to here, and when we get to the top view, it is still 
in fact, six squares wide. So be careful not to make those mistakes. If you know how to do one shape from an isometric to an orthographic projection, you can do any shape. And that's how it's done. It's a matter of counting squares and knowing what direction to go in. I would like you to now complete the remaining drawings in your book. Good luck.